Welcome to FCFP's YouTube channel. As the leader in B2B credit education, we are pleased to offer this micro-learning session on the commercial credit decision-making process. In this session, you will learn the steps necessary in developing sound business credit decisions for your commercial customer portfolio. Don't forget to like us if you enjoyed the session. Hello and welcome to today's online on-demand micro-session on commercial credit risk decision-making. My name is Rich Ferreira. I'm a certified credit executive, and I had a long career at Dun & Bradstreet, where I managed teams that conducted financial and data analysis and credit consulting. And it's my pleasure to be your host for today's session, where we will cover at a relatively high level four key areas that you need to think about in order to have best practices in place to successfully conduct commercial credit risk decision making. So let's get started. Successful commercial risk management needs to include best practices in decision making. It's part of the continuum of a commercial risk management process. You need to have in place a effective credit policy. We have classes and sessions on how to create an correct effective credit policy. We also have sessions on how to manage existing accounts through portfolio management and collections management. Today, we're going to focus on decision making, how you need to make decisions with best practices to onboard new customers. If you have all of this entire process in place, you will see improved cash flows and profits for your business. With respect to credit decision making for new customers, here are some of the specific questions credit professionals need to ask themselves. How do I know the applicant is legitimate and not a fraud? Do I have processes in place to evaluate new requests for credit and extension of credit lines? Am I applying business rules consistently and effectively by using scorecards or some other objective methodology? And does my evaluation process objectively set credit limits? And do I have a good process in place to offer other options to complete the sale with legitimate but marginally high risk customers? So our recommendation is to have good best practices in commercial credit decision making that cover four key areas. They're at the bottom of the screen here, and they include knowing your customer, evaluating your customer, applying business rules, and then setting credit limits and terms. So these best practices should then support, they should be the processes and procedures to support your credit policy. Those things that you've stipulated in your credit policy about how you will evaluate and extend credit to new customers. And we're gonna cover these four areas in a relatively high degree today. And as I've said before, we do have a more detailed session, a full session, which gets into these four areas in much more detail than today, but we're gonna cover them in the next few minutes in a relatively high manner. The first step is uh, know your customer. Very important uh, nowadays, there are many situations where credit professionals are approving credit on companies that are in some way fraudulent. And uh, in many cases, they lose the complete uh, sale. So the first thing is to check for red flags. So these things um, include understanding those those things like is this the company that typically would would buy from you are there any uh, red flags about the data that they've provided you for example they may have said that they um, have been around for a long time but nobody in your industry knows anything about this particular company they may provide uh, to you a very robust financial statement and uh, in many cases, you know, what is uh, too good 
to be true is not true. So there's a host of different red flags that you need to look for. As I've said before, we cover these in more detail in our full session, but you need to make sure in this first part of Know Your Customer that you are dealing with a legitimate business. Lots of ways to do that, but the first thing is look for these red flags. Once you know that you are dealing with a legitimate company, then you need to acquire and understand other data elements from this business that wants to obtain from you unsecured open book credit. The kinds of things that you should understand here is who owns the business? Who runs the business? Are they different than the owners? What is the line of business of this company? And then is this the comp type of business that usually buys from you? Where are they located? Do they have branches? How many employees? Is there anything in the news about this particular company that uh, is either positive or negative? Closings, for example, of branches would be something negative. Expanding operations with additional branches would be something positive. Once you've acquired all the demographic type data, the master data to build up a, uh, uh, a dossier of data on this company, you could obtain it either uh, from your uh, credit application or from a third party that acquires this kind of data on businesses, you then need to acquire and understand uh, trade and bank references and call those references and find out from the uh, third party, the trade supplier, or the bank, what is their relationship with this company that it wants credit from you. There are ways of doing that also through third parties, through, through credit reporting businesses that you could purchase that data from, but you also should get to know your customers past performance by acquiring references and calling those references yourself as opposed to a credit report or do both. Now, financial statements are hard to get. In many cases, though, you may require a financial statement as stipulated by your credit policy for certain transactions. Uh, some industries require more financial statements than others, but uh, many businesses will require them on large transactions. And then you should be familiar with how to evaluate a financial statement. And we'll talk about that in a little, in a little bit. And then also consider obtaining scores. Uh, third party providers have scores, credit scores, financial stress scores, and you should failure scores, and you should uh, make an attempt to uh, acquire those when necessary. When you've acquired uh, all the data in the knowing your customer uh, step, you should then evaluate your customer. First of all, of course, stop if there's any potential fraud then evaluate the other data elements for some risk. For example, could be that the risk in the other data elements is that the principal has been part of another business that had a failure. You should also then evaluate the uh, trade and bank references that you've acquired either on your own or through a third party. If you see uh, or learn about significant slowness, that's of course a concern or some other um, evaluation that you would do in terms of the, the amount of credit that they've been extended. So if, for example, all the trade references either that you require or a third party provides are small dollar amounts in this particular company that you're evaluating wants large credit from you, large amount of credit, then you should be concerned about that. You should also then, uh, when you do get a financial statement, use ratios, spread the, um, the financial statements, including the uh, ca uh, statement of cash flows. There are some ratios that are um, better than others for trade credit. We cover those in the, uh, the full session. And then um, if you've acquired uh, uh, scores, you should understand the value and the purpose of those scores because they can be very helpful to you in the upfront credit evaluation process. The next step is based upon your evaluation, you should then set up some rules that uh, will make decisions for you. They could be rules that you put down on a piece of paper. They could be in an Excel spreadsheet. They could be in some more sophisticated third party provided software package. There are both uh, subjective rules that you would 
create on your own and then perhaps some more objective type rules that you could build in using third party data like scores. You should uh, assign high and low values to your data elements to create those objective or subjective rules. Determine weight for each of the data element summarize the weighted values and then apply some outcomes to the sum of the weighted values. So there's again, you could do this on a piece of paper, you could do an Excel spreadsheet, you can do it in third party software. But you, what you do here is you've done your evaluation, you apply some values and, and percentages, and then you have some outcomes from those uh, summarization of weighted values. And the outcomes is where you uh, begin to take some actions, make some final decisions. So you could to set credit limits and terms. So for example, there may be a certain total of uh, the sum of the weighted values that is so uh, low compared to others that you want to declare for those customers that those are the ones that you will not extend credit to, unless of course they pay cash. You should then um, also have different ranges where the credit limits for certain cohort groups could be different, uh, uh, different for the different summed up values. And then also use those ranges to set the terms based on how risky that total sum of the weighted values looks to you in terms of how that customer is likely to be able to pay you back. And then last but not least, you should be prepared for those that you did that this process, the applying business rule process defines as uh, unsatisfactory for you to extend open book unsecured credit. You want to be prepared with some alternatives to unsecured open book credit. So of course, the alternatives are that you could uh, ask for a financing statement, you can look for guarantees. So those are all alternatives for the uh, customers that you determine are not uh, credit worthy for you to extend unsecured credit. So that ends our micro session on best practices and commercial credit decision making. We've covered uh, know your customer, evaluate your customer, apply business rules and set credit limits and terms. These should support your policy. So these uh, processes and procedures using these best practices should support the policy that you laid out in your, in your credit policy on how you will approve and onboard new customers. We have a more detailed session on this where we go into these four areas in much more detail and we hope that you can join us for one of those sessions as well. Thanks for attending.